And we are the Sales Wolves. Oh, 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 oh. Whew. All right. Well, now that that's over. Something's changed. <laughs> I think it may be your face. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Someone's yeah. level of commitment to the, the wolf part of this sales <laughs> podcast. Uh, isn't that's another. We couldn't handle that's it, a, man. That's a topic for another podcast. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Even the cameraman is laughing. <laughs> Oh man. Uh, the topic of today is keeping it professional in the workplace. We just. <laughs> uh, actually, the topic of today is failure, which this is. Which we, we just <laughs> which did. This is giving a great example. Um, but welcome to the Salesforce Podcast. This is episode 11. And again, we're here for two reasons, and that is uh, to provide. Uh, sales training, um, stuff that you can actually take and, and use the next day uh, or put into use in, in your everyday life and, uh, and it'll make an impact. And then the main thing, which is just to provide appreciation. Uh, we just love salespeople and we love seeing salespeople get better and seeing salespeople succeed uh, and seeing salespeople really embrace their their profession and, and, uh, and make, a, make a career out of it. And the funny thing is, is we see everybody as salespeople. So mm -hmm. we love people yep. and we want people to get better at being people. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have phenomenal sales skills, which are just interpersonal skills, people mm -hmm. skills, follow-up skills, I mean, these things are applicable in every single industry. Sure. So absolutely. Anyway, we've got a unique topic today, and the topic is one that Tyler is very familiar with, <laughs> um, <laughs> and that is failure. But uh, but man, anybody that's done anything significant is very familiar with failure. Absolutely. So and. And so we're going to talk about failure, and we're probably going to talk about it in a little bit of a unique of a unique way. Um, but ultimately, uh, that that in, in anything and everything that you do, um, every failure is one step closer to success. That's it. And and I think I'll start just by saying that, and, I, and I'm very new to parenting, so you've got more experience on this. But I think the best parenting advice in the world that you could give. Mm -hmm is to tell your kids to fail early and fail often. I think fail we actually talked about that on one of the other podcasts. We actually mentioned it because I was talking about yeah. Lainey um, coming to me and telling me she failed a math mm -hmm. quiz. Yep. And and she was like all sad. Mm -hmm. And when she told me she failed, I was like, yes! Yeah. Good job, baby. And she was so surprised. But I, I'm, I'm in the middle of teaching my kids and teach, teaching anybody that will listen. Mm. If, if you're not failing, you're not doing anything. Yeah. You're not attempting anything. You're not pressing the envelope at all. I, I interrupted you. Sorry. Go no, ahead. That's exactly Go ahead. What first time prayer. No, that's it. No, I mean that was it. Um, so that's something that I keep in the back of my mind. Um, yeah, you know, as our as our daughter gets older, um, it's something that I want to make sure that they fully embrace the fact that there is no there is no condemnation. There is no judging based on no. failures. That failing just means that you attempted to do something that you hadn't done before. Exactly. Uh, and that's the key to success. So, that is a so let's just jump right into it. I know you had a lot of stuff that you wanted to kind of dive into on this topic since you've had so much experience in, the in fail, failure. I have failed. Well, let me tell you what. <laughs> if it, it, This podcast would be hours and hours and hours if I started going over um, all of my failures sure. and all of my shortcomings and, and everything else. But the, but the long and short of it is it starts, it starts in our education system a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Actually, it starts, starts before that, right? So... So our kids will attempt anything in the beginning. You, your your little one, she's not walking yet, right? Yeah. She will be in the next four months, right? Yeah, I think I honestly. I How is she? Seven I'm months very now. Very bad at timelines. Just seven months exactly. She's a month. So in the next four months, sometimes she's going to be walking, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you're she's going to attempt things, right? She's going to attempt to grab stuff off a of thing, mm. and you guys are going to be no, no, no. She's going to hear no all the time. Mm. We we start getting conditioned to it that no, we can't do this because because early on we attempt anything. Sure. I mean the 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 stove is on. We mm. want to touch it, mm -hmm. right? 
and it's gonna hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we want to touch it. But we'll attempt anything. Sure. Right? We're born. We're born. We talked about this with uh, with one of the books that we read, Relentless. We're we're born relentless, taught to relent. Mm -hmm. Right. So so we're born we're born wild, and we're taught to be tamed. Yeah. And 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 born bad, taught to be good. Well, that's kind of controversial, but uh, but uh, but but we're we're born willing to try anything, and the only way we learn and we get better is through failure. It continues in our education system, where where I I, I get a bad grade and I'm taught that I'm less mm -hmm. because of that bad grade. Sure. You know my 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 F or D or C. Or B, it's not an A, and if it's an A, it's not an A plus. Mm. That I failed at something, and failure is bad. We're taught failure is bad over and over and over and over. You failed at that. You pulled that off the counter when you were two. You failed. You got disciplined for it. You failed. Sure. But we're not taught that that's the only way. The only way to be successful at anything. And so, one of the things is 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 getting everybody out there, um, and 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 everybody in your sphere of influence and yourself first of all to. To fail, fail at something. Mm -hmm. Try something that's too hard, right? And uh, and so that's the that's the first key. Is if you're if you're not failing at something, if you can't point to a failure that happened in the last couple days, last week, last month, if you can't point to a failure, then you're not going anywhere. Sure. Guaranteed, I promise. You are not becoming something else. So. And so it, so it grows into a fear of failure oh, uh, yeah. that, that people have. And I think there's some important points to discuss when it comes to the fear of, of failure. And, and the first is most people aren't, most people don't have really a fear of actual failure in itself. It's the fear of failing in front of other people. And sure, so sure. The, what will someone else think? Yeah, so, so the majority of people aren't really scared of failing by themselves. They're just scared of failing in front of others. Right. Uh, and so it's it's the opinions of others or, or somebody else that they know. And usually it's the important people they know, like their family, like parents, sure. spouse. Um, spouse, kids, uh, co-workers, Brothers. just friends, family, all that, um, of what they'll think. Uh, because you attempted something and you failed, what what right. is it going to look like from their perspective? And that's usually what what holds people back uh, the most of the time. It's, right. it's not the it's not the the, the fear of failure. It's the fear of fear of failing and you know, other people seeing. That's right. Uh, which is is just something that it's a mental block, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and, and I don't know if there's something that we can teach on a step by step basis of you know do this step, this step, this step, and you'll overcome that. It's just a it's just a switch you're gonna to have to flip. Your and, it's, and it's overcoming that um, overly caring what other people think. Yeah. Okay. Because I mean, I care what my wife thinks. Mm -hmm. I care what she thinks about me and what's going on. Sure. So it's hard for me to say we well, don't need to give a shit about what other people think because we do. We're humans. We yeah. care. I care what you think about mm -hmm. me. Very little. But <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> and think about you. I know. <laughs> Maybe we can turn this into a friggin' stand up, man. <laughs> but uh, but but we care. You care what your yeah. wife thinks about you. You sure. care what your dad thinks about mm -hmm. you, and, and and our parental figures and yeah. people that that are important to us. But to overly care about that and let that control, um, you're attempting or not attempting to achieve, mm -hmm. is absolutely detrimental. Yeah. I can remember when, when I first got involved with the business that Joseph and I are involved, are, and I are involved in, <laughs> there was this constant kind of theme in the beginning of, of failing your way to the top because I would come back uh, each week from being out in the field for three, four days at a time, and I would come back and, and he'd say, hey, how many policies did you sell? And I'd say, oh, I sold 120 policies. And thinking he'd be like, yeah, that's awesome. And he'd say, he'd say well, how many people did you see? And I said, I saw, you know, 250 people. <laughs> like that's terrible, <laughs> but but it was literally it was literally the case of of in my situation it was failing my way to the top because sure. I was just going to outwork everybody else. Yeah, yeah. And so I very quickly had to realize that that all the goals that I had had to be set on uh, different things, not just policy sold, but things like close ratios sure. and things like that that I had to start that I had to start setting because what I was seeing as a success, somebody else was seeing. Uh, as failure, yeah. um, which is which is very interesting, but but with um, with failure, you know, one of the people that we we watch all the time or listen to, we've got four hundred of his books sitting uh, to your left or my left. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk, he talks about failure all the that, time. That's actually right. Is it? But it's, yeah, 
Yeah, my right, their left. <laughs> <laughs> Stage right. I yeah, you really, you just failed. Starboard, <laughs> starboard, Star Star That's the starboard patch. <laughs> Line. Anyways, Gary Vaynerchuk <laughs> talks about failure all the time. It was an interesting <laughs> quote that I that I picked up from a, a video I was watching the other day, and, and he said he was talking to his 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 really his close team, the executive team at VaynerMedia, and he said, "Where's Ricky? Wasn't he going to come in and say I have hey? No idea." Probably hard at work. There he is. Ricky! What's up? What's, <laughs> What's happening, house? man? We want to introduce Ricky, and uh, Ricky's been doing a lot of the editing, or been doing all we'll the editing on the video. Video, yeah. right. video right now, so this is Ricky. What's up? And so Let's you go, guys, guys will see more of him. Uh, do you want to say anything? Any uh, words of wisdom? Uh, we're talking about failure. So have you ever had any failures that that have uh, you've learned lessons from? Or I have. Any thoughts on it? I have. Um, one thing that I've, I guess I've learned about failure just from listening to a lot of different leaders and um, especially listening to these guys. Um, failure is one of those things that you have to, if you can't embrace failure, it's one of those things that um, will be the bridge between the success that you want and where you currently are. Because oh, failure awesome. just becomes like it should we leave all of the yeah. success that you have is <laughs> <We're> <laughs> literally I've, I've heard uh, Dave Ramsey he said before he said he said well he's I think he quoted someone else but um, he says success is just right above built it, it, success is built on a pile of failure after failure after failure after failure after failure yeah. hmm. and you're looking down most people think you know you're looking down from a golden palace where everything's polished and clean and nothing bad happened to get there but you're just standing on top of a bunch of failures and mistakes and so like hmm. embracing that means basically saying I'm going to go after success now because I'm willing to embrace failure and you'll fail faster and you'll, you'll continue, you, you won't spend as much time trying to avoid it. You'll just say, hey, if I'm going to get to where I need to go, I need to fail a lot more. So now you'll wake up the next day and say, okay, today I'm going to fail as much as possible. Where can I fail? Because it's a learning, it's a learning, it's a learning lesson. Mm -hmm. Like you're see, you're getting to understand a lot better how I should not do this thing. Yeah. How, what's the best way to do it? What's the best way not to do it? So changing that view on, on failure starts to allow you to embrace it a lot quicker. And so you Absolutely. get to That's success beautiful. a lot faster. Absolutely. So. Did we prep him for that? No. <laughs> not, one, not one shred. <laughs> like, that was sick. Yeah. Like, Ty, the, when he started talking, Tyler was like, uh, yeah. Maybe we should just leave and have him talk. Maybe we should just have him do the podcast. <laughs> no. yeah, Dude, yeah. thank you, man. I appreciate Absolutely. you. Appreciate you. Yes. Talk, and right if you saw the uh, the uh, mashup that that Ricky did of all ten episodes, it was absolutely awesome. It so was awesome, man. Sure Thank you. Seen that. See you, buddy. Did you notice um, when he was talking how he said uh, what I've noticed from a lot of leaders and from you guys? And from <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I've noticed from great leaders and you know, funny thing, and also and, these and, guys. And also <laughs> these guys. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. You but, can tell we don't take ourselves that seriously. <laughs> oh man! So back to this uh, story on Gary Vaynerchuk. So what he told his team was, he said, "Hey guys, you know I don't need peacetime generals." And I thought you would like this. I don't need peacetime generals. I need wartime generals. So yeah, right. when we're meeting together and we're talking as a team, uh, I don't want to just hear about how all the great accounts are going and how everything, all the successes. I don't want to hear about that. Like I want to hear about the stuff that's not working. I want to hear about yeah. all the failures and let's talk about that and what you're doing because it doesn't. It really matter so much to me how you're handling the successes it's I want to know how you're handling the failures right um, and I thought that was such a cool th a thing that he said I don't need I don't need peacetime generals I need, need wartime war -time generals yeah that was that's a that fact was very cool. I love that man I catch a lot of good nuggets from him so a lot many. Of Absolutely. yeah he has been uh... so what else on failure oh, this is one thing you wrote down I like this would you be so afraid if you knew no one was watching uh, you well, need to go after. Here's the thing. You need to go after whatever it is your your goal or your dream. You need to go after it like you can't fail, and it needs to be so fast that you're going after that. Like I felt I've fallen on my face so many times, but I've gotten so good at failing yeah, yeah. <laughs> over the years sure. that when I'm falling now, I just tuck into a roll and get up and keep running. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's how you got to look at it. It's like failure. What's that that Les Brown always says? When you fall, make sure you fall on your back. So because if you can look, look up, up, you can get, get up. Dude, I love him, man. He's, He's awesome. The best. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool if we could get him on the podcast sometime? That would be... It probably would only cost us about a... We should probably set that as a goal so that we can fail. You want to set... We can set it as a goal. <laughs> so we, and then let's start... Commu you know what? Let's call and send him an email every single podcast 
on the podcast or something. On the podcast. While we're on it and just and and or if we can pick a group of people that we want yeah. these we want these five people to be on the podcast with us at some point and then we can just start communicating on the podcast trying to get to them. And we can show people how to fail. One can be Ricky. One can be <laughs> We got Ricky on it already. <laughs> we got Ricky. What was that Jason? Podcast we got we did? Jason. What was that other podcast we did that we said that quote from well, who's it? Dave or some somebody's name. We kept butchering <laughs> yeah. his we're name like, and we're like, sorry Dave. Name. Sorry, Dave. Maybe we need to reach out to Dave. We can get him on. Get him on. <laughs> But we are going to have we are going to start having some guests on the yep. show. Uh, yeah. That is something that we want to start doing so that you guys can see some different perspectives than just ours. Because that's right, um, that's super important for you to get a full. You no, know, we probably be able to do is flip this table like this, and we will just sit three mm-hmm. and have them in the middle. Yeah, and you and I just hammer questions to them or whatever. Absolutely, look we'll good. All right, just kind of slowly slow it out and let them take, <laughs> let them take over. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, guys, this one's this was a uh, quick podcast uh, that we put together today, but it's an important one. Uh, and and I'll end with the cheesiest statement of all time, which is, uh, what's the most probably cliche statement you can think about failures? Uh, probably something like, what "Fail your way to the top." You you, what, if, what would you do if you knew you, you couldn't, couldn't fail? fail? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but the reality is, it's the failures. After failures, after failures, after fa- failures, that will ultimately get you to the to the success. And what I've found in my own personal life is that when I was in the middle of those failures, is when I could feel like I was closest mm-hmm. to the next breakthrough. Oh yeah. Uh, and it's always when things are the absolute toughest that you're closest to that next God. breakthrough. And so that would be uh, my. But you learn to smell that. You can. Yeah. You can almost smell it. You're like, oh, this is getting good. Yeah, and, and that's the encouraging thing is that no matter what you're going through right now, if you're going through a difficult time that may feel like you're in the middle of a failure, that more than likely you're just a couple days, couple weeks away. <sighs> Uh, from from something that's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, and so with that, uh, we do appreciate every single person Absolutely. watching this podcast. If you could share it on Facebook, we got this thing on iTunes, uh, SoundCloud, and Facebook and yep. YouTube. Um, if you could share the Facebook link, uh, that would mean a whole lot to us. It if really you're does. anything from these podcasts, uh, we'll be coming back at you next Friday uh, with episode twelve, and that is going to be on questions. And, uh, and we're going to come at you with an interesting perspective on questions. True. So with that, good. I'm Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow. That sounds, that sounds weird. <laughs>